Hey everyone, Shemim here and welcome to our third and final night of the Combat Zone Wrestling Best of the Best Tournament. We've got some cracking matches lined up for you this evening and tonight in our main event we'll be crowning our first Combat Zone Wrestling Champion. Here we go then with our opening match of the evening. It is going to be Brody Lee going one on one against Pentagon Jr. This should be pretty cool. This one. One of these two guys will progress to our final this evening. The fatal four way elimination match, of course, for the Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Pentagon's having a very busy day today. He's also going to be wrestling over at AEW in the uh, AEW Tag Team Championship match against. Oh, Against the Lucha, uh, he is the Lucha Brothers, against the Young Bucks. So if you're not seeing that already, then do go and check out AEW All In. It's going to be banging. I don't know where I got, where did I get that from? Ooh. That was a weird phrase. I regret using it straight away. Either way, Pentagon versus Brody Lee. It's been a, an interesting couple of days. I mean, we've had some decent matches. We've not had anything spectacular. We have had a couple of great matches this week. Um... We had, if you're looking for a great match, then definitely check out the Omega versus Okada match on New Japan. Best two out of three falls. That was on Thursday. Uh, and also, um, I believe Omega versus Moxley on All In was fantastic as well. So check that one out. That was uploaded today. So two fantastic matches this week. But it's been a bit of a, I don't know. I shouldn't be talking down my own videos like, but... The quality's not really been... It's been decent, but it's not really been outstanding so far in this tournament. And I'm hoping tonight is going to be the night that we really get the absolute bangers of matches. Maybe it's because we haven't got any, like, really high-rated people. I mean, in the previous two matches I just mentioned, you have people that are rated in the 90s. Uh, whereas these guys are all rated uh, mid-80s. So maybe just the lower stats means they don't really put on... Well, it means they don't uh, kick out of pins as often and stuff like that, so it makes it a bit more quick. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We've got some great matches lined up for you tonight. There we've got this one. Uh, after this, we've got Jimmy Havoc versus Alistair Black. We've got Adam Cole versus Joey Janela, and we've got John Moxley versus Mark Briscoe. So four cracking matches in the semi-finals leading up to our big Fatal 4-Way finale. And we've also got to squeeze in the middle for no apparent reason. PCO one half of our Combat Zone Wrestling Tag Team Champions going one-on-one -on -one against Killian Dane, making his debut here in Combat Zone Wrestling. Pentagon now just dropping Brody Lee once again off the apron, dropping to the outside. Pentagon just attacking him across the chest of the boot. I, wonder, I, I, I do wonder if you guys have been able to keep up because I've uploaded a ton of stuff this week. I mean, an absolute ton of stuff. So I'm hoping you guys have been able to keep up. I mean, I've struggled. I mean, I am so tired right now. It's unbelievable. There's been a lot of recording. Plus, my parents are up this weekend, so I wasn't able to. Uh, I wasn't able to record over the weekend. So I had to get everything recorded during the week, and I'm absolutely shattered right now. But we are going to squeeze through this, and we'll continue on tomorrow night once again. With a fresh week. So tomorrow is all about uh, Impact. And next week is all about building up to the Impact Pay-Per-View Unbreakable next Sunday. So there's a lot of stuff coming on. As Pentagon's just won it. Wow, okay. Again, similar to the last couple of nights. It was just sort of out of nowhere, really, wasn't it, that victory? The Pentagon's going through to our main event of the evening to fight for the Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Pentagon, Pentagon. Pentagon effort and a handshake, and we get a lot of these the last couple of days, and it is reciprocated by uh, Mr. Harper. Pen Sorry, I'm uh, trying to remember things, talk and write down at the same time. There we go. Pentagon Jr. is in our main event of the evening.
And here we go then for our second match of the evening. Looking to see who is going to be joining Pentagon Jr. in that fatal four-way elimination main event. We have got Alistair Black who defeated Cassius Ono yesterday. Versus Jimmy Havoc who defeated Oni Lorcan on Friday. Interesting match this one then. Both these guys desperate for gold. Jimmy Havoc uh, so far... Is that a, an interesting time in this universe mode? Of course, he was... He was on the losing side to a match against MJF on AEW Dynamite last week. He has a match today on All In as well against Joey Janela. Um, but of course, he did win that match against... Uh, only Lorcan. So it's been a, a, a bit of a mixed bag so far for Havoc, but he could end up winning the championship here. It's in his hands. Talking of hands, he's stamping on Alistair Black's. Alistair Black got it, like I said, by defeating Cassius Ono in probably the best match we've had so far in this tournament. No surprises there. Alistair Black is always an absolute star, isn't he? Havoc then with the double drop kicks right to the face. Of Alistair Black and a big knee to the side of the face as well. There is the pin by Jimmy Havoc. One. Only a one count. I've got hiccups. I don't know if you can hear it coming through the video. Every now and again my voice has to stop to try and hide the hiccup. Alistair Black just clotheslines Jimmy Havoc to the outside. And the battle commences now on the outside. So Havoc will also be part of our next tournament coming up in a couple of weeks time. Which is going to be our tournament of death. Which is much more up uh, Havoc's alley. I believe he's the current uh, Tournament of Death champion. Deathmatch champion. Um, over at Combat Zone Wrestling. I shouldn't keep saying those words. Because it's going to completely ruin me with the YouTube algorithm. Saying stuff like that. But there you go. It is what it is. Saying the wrong type of words. I've been trying to avoid it as much as I can. You have to have different things in your titles. And... You have to avoid saying certain words to um, to stop your video being... It's really weird that if, if, if you know a lot about YouTube and the algorithm and stuff like that, like you say certain things, it gets your video seen more often. It sort of triggers um, tabs and so forth. So like if I say like Fortnite, there we go, that's my, that's my video doing better. Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. There we go, this video is going to do well now. But if I say bad words like death, then it, it reduces it instead. So it's a, yeah, you know. There you go. There's a random YouTube lesson for you that you no one actually asked for. So I do apologize. Either way, Jimmy Havoc and uh, Alistair Black once again on the outside. I was going to say I was surprised that Jimmy Havoc wasn't part of the WWE signing spree in uh, the UK. But probably due to his match style, they're not really... A big fan on the deathmatch style, are they? Although they did sign Moxley, so... You know... Havoc was a, a possibility, I suppose. I like the way now that Moxley's um, not got a vest on anymore. Because I remember watching a, uh, reading a tweet sorry, on the first day that it was at WWE. And it said on the tweet, what was it? Something on the lines of... So embarrassing when you have to explain barbed wire scars and you're back to the doctor on the first day. And stuff like that. So that's why he had to wear a, a top the whole way through his WWE career and now he's come back out into the independent scene he's not bothering anymore and you saw at um, Fighter Fest just the the damage he, he received he got quite a few barbed wire cuts to his back didn't he Black now sending Havoc into the corner nice boot right across the chest Black now sending Havoc into the far corner running forearm into the face and Black is looking for the kill early on. There's the Black Mass. Jimmy Havoc flops in the corner. Pinned by Alistair Black for the one, two, and three. He's got it. Alistair Black with a victory, defeating Jimmy Havoc. And Alistair Black joins Pentagon in our main event tonight. Wow. Not even any, not even any highlights in this one either. He hit Jimmy Havoc that hard, he's disappeared. Well, Jimmy Havoc's got to hop in a helicopter now and get his way all the way over to AEW, ready for his match against Joey Janela. 
That's the one thing I didn't think of in this universe. Maybe it's having two shows on the same day and people being booked for both. And here we go, then our third semi-final of the evening. Adam Cole versus Joey Janela. What a match this is, actually, thinking about it. Should be very entertaining. It's Adam Cole taking an early advantage, though. A couple of boots right across the spine of poor old Joey Janela, who's back up on his feet, though. And Adam Cole catches him with a cheap shot right in the face. But Janela pushes him away, now just spears him. And Janela just attacking Cole with the right hands. Janela knows this is a massive opportunity for him. He could potentially become the first ever Combat Zone Wrestling Champion here in our universe mode. That'd be huge for him, that would. Adam Cole just stamping on the knee of Joe Janela. There's a boot in the gut as well. Of course, the winner of this one will join Alistair Black and Pentagon Jr. in our Fatal 4-Way Elimination main event this evening. It's going to be pretty awesome, I think, that one. No matter who wins these next two matches, I think. And, of course, don't forget, we've still got PCO versus Killian Dane as well tonight. One-on-one. -on -one. No reason. Just fancied it, you know. As you do. Of course, PCO won half of our tag team champions. There's a pin by Adam Cole. One. Only a one count. Cole now circling the grounded Janela, dropping a boot in the back before folding him over. But Janela playing possum, kicking Adam Cole away with his free leg. His third leg. Slamming Adam Cole arm first into the mat before raining down the right hands into his face. Janela now drops into the pin as my television is about to switch itself off. Bloody power saving mode, eh? That's how long I've been laying here recording tonight. My TV wants to turn itself off for power saving. Janela there with a neck break and now dropping an elbow right in the face of Adam Cole. Brings Adam Cole back up to seated base and Cole catching Janela with the elbow in the face. I can't say Janela quickly. Jan I've got to say it really slow. Janela. Catching Janela. Yeah, it's a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a tongue. A bit of a mouthful, old Janela. Oh, it's a Penelope Ford. Cole being rolled through there by Janela, by Joey. But Cole's back up now, dropping him all head first in that scoop slam. Very direct scoop slam that was. Adam Cole now stamping on the hand of Joey Janela. For bringing Janela back up to a standing base, there's the boot in the gut. Janela with a right hand in the gut of Adam Cole, though. Now, he's going to take him up out of nowhere into the package pile driver. Wow, that's what got him into this match. He drops into the pin. Will it be enough to get him in the final? One, two. Oh, it's only a two count. Cole able to kick out. That would have been massive for Janela, that would have been. If he pulled off a victory here, that would have been huge. Janela now with a boot on the back of the arm of Adam Cole. Drags him into the middle of the ring. Well, not quite, but... You know what I mean? Middle -er. The middle of the ring. Cole fighting back. There's the uppercut on Janela. Then into a flatliner. Cole now bringing Janela back up to a seated base. Janela good, strong right hand to the, the gut of Adam Cole. Now sending him into the corner. And Adam Cole comes storming out with that big rock bottom. Now dropping a knee right in the back of the head of Joey Janela as well. Another boot on the back of Joey Janela. And now Adam Cole just dropping the left hands right to the face of Janela. And a boot in the gut as well. There's the pin for one. Only a one count. Adam Cole looking strong here today. Bringing Janela back up to his feet. There's a... Super kick to the gut, followed up by taking it up on the shoulders, dropping him neck first across 
That top rope. Cole now dropping a boot right into the gut of Joey Janela as well. And Adam Cole has really taken control of this match. As he goes up into the... Oh, the brain buster onto the knee. Adam Cole drops into the pin. Will that be enough And the brain buster? It w well, no, it won't. I was about to say it was. I was convinced Janela was going to be out there, you know. But Adam Cole back up on his feet, stalking the grounded Janela. There's the super kick in the gut, followed up by the shining wizard. That's what knocked Sammy Callahan out of this competition. And it has also knocked Joey Janela out as well as Adam Cole wins the match and progresses on to tonight's main event. Wow. Our main event is getting stacked now, isn't it? Our main event is currently Pentagon versus Alistair Black versus Adam Cole. And we're going to add either John Moxley or Mark Briscoe to that match as well. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be crazy, that match. Adam Cole there with a the brain buster onto the knee. I thought that could have been all, but no, not quite. It took one more maneuver to get there. And of course, that was the shining wizard right to the face. Janela was already busted open. It was just insult to injury, wasn't it? So Adam Cole goes on to tonight's main event of the evening. And who will be joining there? Let's find out. Here we go in our final semi-final. We have got John Moxley versus Mark Briscoe. Of course, John Moxley defeated Drew Gulak pretty easily, actually, to get here. Uh, Mark Briscoe defeated Davy Richards, actually. Which I was a little bit surprised about. I thought Davy was going to do well here this weekend. Moxley there taking an early advantage with the neck breaker. I do apologize, my voice keeps going funny still, doesn't it? I've still got the hiccups, and I keep trying to avoid hiccuping, and it makes my voice go weird. You know, it is what it is. It's a fun little game, isn't it? As Moxley here dominating the early proceedings. Mark Briscoe's got no offense whatsoever. Moxley's just been dominating here, and he continues with that boot right across the chest. Moxley, of course, another big match for him today. He is wrestling over at All In against Kenny Omega in a number one contendership match for the AEW Championships. So if you've not watched All In yet, go over and check that out. That's going to be a biggie. Mark Briscoe, they're finally getting some offense here. Wrenching back at the neck and then just slamming the back of Moxley's head into the ground before dropping an elbow in the face. Here's the pin by Mark Briscoe. One. Only a one count. Briscoe heading up top. Shooting star press by Mark Briscoe. Wow. That was a bit out there, I tell you. It's not what you expect when you look at Mark Briscoe, is it? Is now he locks in the uh, the armbar submission, sort of. It's a very weak submission. It's more of a... Uh, more of a, a sort of breathing technique, isn't it, really? Just a chance to take a bit of a break mid-match. Wrenching back at the arm of Moxley and give him a chance to just recuperate a bit of energy because Moxley had a very, very dominant start to this match. Mark Briscoe now bringing Moxley back up. Just twisting the head of Mox. Oh, really wrenching that head. Just see Mark Briscoe very happy with himself. Drops into the pin on Moxley. Not even a one count. I'm surprised how much uh, Mark Briscoe is dominating the early part of this match, to be honest. I thought uh, Briscoe would be very dominant, but it's not looking that way. Oh, sorry, I thought Moxley would be very dominant, sorry. He had the early portion of the match, but since then, Mark Briscoe's just dominated. it would be a, a big surprise here if Briscoe can get this victory and knock John Moxley out. Briscoe now front chancery on Moxley. 
Elbow to the back of the arm. Oh, slap as well. Wow. A stiff slap right to the face of Moxley now. Briscoe locking in a sleeper hold. He grapevines it as well. But Moxley's able to break free. Wow, a headbutt just using the back of his head straight to the face of Mark Briscoe. Back up to his feet. Now Moxley in with a neck breaker. Briscoe gets a back elbow for his troubles. And a big forearm as well, followed by second forearm. Moxley can feel it coming now. Big forearm in the corner, followed up by a Bulldog. And now just twisting the head of Mark Briscoe, just slowing the pace down, allowing Moxley a chance to get a breather. It's been a difficult match for him so far. But he is in control now. He needs to take advantage of that situation. Mark Briscoe manages to just push Moxley away, but Moxley now catches him. He's going to drag him along and drop him. Snake eyes across that top rope. Once again, bringing Briscoe back up to his feet. There's a front chancer in Moxley continuing the dominance against the ropes. Springs off, went for the back elbow, but Briscoe saw it come in. And he hits him with that headlock driver, the original Dirty Deeds. What is this? Wow, okay. It's Baron Corbin. Why is Baron Corbin here? Either way, it's a sneaky little cheeky roll-up by Mark Briscoe. One, only a one count. Baron Corbin is here in Combat Zone Wrestling. That is nothing that I've set up, I will say that. This is organic. This is something the game has done. But, you know what? Baron Corbin works. There's a dirty deed by John Moxley on Mark Briscoe. There's the pin. And Baron Corbin breaks the pin. Is the referee not going to... Is he not going to give a disqualification for that? Mark Briscoe now suplex on John Moxley. Baron Corbin interfering here. Okay, well, I think Baron Corbin has just announced himself as part of this Combat Zone Wrestling roster by himself. And it looks like he may have just cost... John Moxley, his position in the final. Mark Briscoe now, and Moxley up on his shoulders, looking for that inverted Death Valley driver. Wow, if Moxley gets pinned here, that would be massive. There is the pin by Mark Briscoe. One, two, only a two count. Wow. Baron Corbin here on Combat Zone Wrestling, interfering in this match. That's going to make things very interesting now, you know. Very interesting. Moxley elbow in the top of the head. Maybe that's Corbin's way of interjecting himself into the uh, Tournament of Death next month, but I can't imagine that's Corbin's cup of tea, to be honest. Nice gut wrench suplex there by Mark Briscoe on Moxley. Brings Moxley back up to his feet and... A big clothesline takedown. And it makes you wonder, I thought Moxley had this match won. Uh, when he hit that dirty deeds and went for the pin. But Baron Corbin had other ideas. I'm surprised the referee just didn't disqualify him and give Moxley the victory there and then, to be honest. But the referees allowed it to go. Combat Zone Wrestling, we allow more to go here, don't we, really? We like the fact that it's a competitive place and... Sometimes people break the rules in that case. But there's a second Dirty Deeds of the match. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And that is enough this time for John Moxley to make his way through to tonight's main event. But Baron Corbin has made his uh, presence very much known, distracting John Moxley in this match. I feel like that might be a, a potential match in the future, you know, Moxley versus Corbin. I must admit, if there was one brand that I expected Baron Corbin to be part of, Combat Zone Wrestling was going to be that brand, just because he's look more than anything. But, um, yeah, like I say, this is nothing to do with me. 
the game made this happen. The game made Baron Corbin turn up here and the game almost made Mark Briscoe get through to the finals. But it wasn't his night and my god the finals going to be amazing isn't it? Have you seen the final now? Pentagon Jr., Alistair Black, Adam Cole, John Moxley, fatal four-way elimination to become the first combat zone wrestling heavyweight champion. Like, if I could have picked four people at the very beginning, I'm pretty sure I would have picked those four to be part of the main event, I tell you. Right, we need John Moxley to have a, a bit of a breather now, so we've got another match lined up before the final begins. And here we go then, one half of our Combat Zone Wrestling Tag Team Champions, PCO, goes one and one against the Beast of Belfast, Killian Dane, or Big Demo. I'm Big Demo. That was his independent name, if you didn't know, by the way. I'm not just having a bit of a stroke. So PCO looked very impressive yesterday, as they, uh, was it yesterday? No, it wasn't, it was Friday, wasn't it? As they defeated the team of Teddy Smith, and, or Teddy Hart, sorry, should I say, and Davey Boy Smith Jr. for the Tag Team Championships. Alongside, of course, his tag team partner, Brody King. Which is a very last-minute addition to this roster, I must admit. I had PCO because I didn't mean to have PCO right. What happened was, I was going through the core screen looking at other people, and then this PCO popped up, and I was like, I just can't not have that. I mean, the core's fantastic. I can't not take that core. That was the problem. What if I should put PCO in our retro roster as well? He's literally been rested for that long. Like I said, I was on his Wikipedia earlier. PCO is a former WWF Tag Team Champion. That's how long he's been wrestling for. He was Tag Team Champion in WWF. I think it was like 92 or something it was. I forgot what it stands for. Is it like Pierre... Carl Ole, was it something like that? Pierre Carl Ole, something like that, yeah. PCO. But he's really found a new lease on life at the moment with his Ring of Honor run. Uh, he's definitely reinventing himself. It's amazing to see a man of this age who's just... He just seems to be peaking. It's really weird to see just how much he's just developed. Because I'd never really heard much of him at all since... Well, I, mean, I heard of him before, obviously, because he was a classic wrestler, but... Since the last couple of years, he started working PWG and he's got himself a Ring of Honor contract and he's he's just sort of just stormed out of nowhere again. Well, for me, anyway, I'm not sure. Other people might have been keeping an eye on his career the whole way through, but yeah, this new character he's sort of portraying, especially in, in Ring of Honor, is doing incredibly well. Nice bicycle kick there by uh, Killian Dane. Just dropping a, a boot right across the arm as well now of old PCO. And you wonder whether if there's a victory here for Dane, whether that would maybe allow Dane the chance to go for a tag team championship match, maybe? Not quite sure who he'd use as a partner. Maybe uh, Alexander Wolf, of course, as part of his sanity days. Maybe even EY, Eric Young. I did originally have Eric Young down to uh, be part of this show, but... I changed them out last minute for somebody else, but I feel like Eric Young and Sanity could definitely be part of this roster. As because Bray Wyatt and the Bright and the Wyatt family, as I've said before as well, I think there's a, a good shout for them being part of this roster as well at some point. Dane sending PCO into the corner and just flattens him as well. PCO dropping face first into the mat. Dane now just wrenching back at the leg. Now dropping a boot right across the chest of PCO as well. Dane now bringing PCO back up to his feet. There's a couple of rogue strikes with PCO fighting back and just spears Dane out of his boots. As Dane rolls to the outside, slowly crawling his way back up to his feet. PCO stands there waiting and just spears Dane off the apron. Dane crashes into the ground in the barricade, but catches the leg of PCO into a dragon screw. As the referee begins his count, 
Dane sending PCO face first into the barricade. Now bringing him back up to his feet once again. Into a fallaway slam, maybe? No, PCO reverses it. Into a front chance with the elbow in the back of the head, and PCO gets back in the ring as the referee started counting. Dame with a strong right hand now is going to take PCO up top. This is going to be big. This is two big, solid men. Falling from the middle rope. Wow. Big superplex there by Killian Dane. Brings PCO back up to his feet, but PCO taking Dane down. PCO dragging Dane along and a couple of big elbows in the gut. Dane now front chancery on PCO. And slamming him face first into the mat. Dane brings PCO back up to his feet and just flattens it with a running crossbody. Dane drops into the pin for the one, two, and three. And Killian Dane has just pinned one half of the Combat Zone Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Will that afford Killian Dane a Tag Team Championship match in the future? It's an interesting question. Of course, we do have the Tournament of Death coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Maybe Killian Dane could be part of that uh, pay-per-view. Maybe bring himself a tag team partner. Be interesting, that would. It was an interesting match altogether, actually. I, I thought PCO would do a bit better, to be honest. And there we go. It's a strong win for Dane, then. It was a, a pretty even match. Both guys had quite a few opportunities. But eventually, it was Dane who uh, got the big one. So Killian Dane victorious then over PCO. But now it's time for the big one. Now it's time for our main event. Now it's time for that fatal four-way. Now it's time to crown our first Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Wow, these belts are so pixelated. It's unbelievable, isn't it? But that is the Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. It don't look too bad far away. It's when you get closer it's a problem, isn't it? But, you know, it is what it is. It was the only CZW belts I could find on the community creations rather than just creating my own, which I'm not very good at, I must admit. But here we go then. Fatal 4-Way, Pentagon Jr., Alistair Black, Adam Cole, John Moxley. Fatal 4-Way elimination winner walks away as the Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. It's going to be a very interesting match. Like I said before, if I could have picked four people to put in this match, it probably would have been these four, to be honest with you. I'm so hyped. It's like the best possible final we could have possibly got, I think. Well, then you're on this other... It was such a strong competition, there was always going to be a lot of names we could have put in here, really, wasn't there? But it is going to be uh, a real fun match, hopefully. As Adam Cole dropping Pentagon chin first across the apron there, as it's now Alistair Black and Moxley in the middle of the ring. The Mox. And now Moxley just wrenching back. In with the, uh, like a little STO sort of submission, wasn't it? It's amazing just how over Mox is at the moment, isn't he? He's walked straight into New Japan and become the uh, the United States champion. He's gone straight into the G1 Climax Festival. He's working in the main event sort of scene of AEW. Uh, I don't know if he'll end up working elsewhere, whether... I don't know what the, uh, the link-up is between AEW and other companies. I wonder if he'll get an opportunity to work back in Los Angeles, you know. It's a possibility, isn't it? Thinking about it, because of... Well, because of the Bucks link-up with Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. Of course, um, Excalibur's doing commentary for AEW as well. So, 
because of that link up, it would not surprise me at all if they're very open with allowing PWG to lose, uh, to lose, to use their talents. And Moxley could be a star name that the PWG could use to boost up their Battle of Los Angeles. I mean, they have started announcing the names of Battle of Los Angeles this week. Uh, I think the only two I've seen at this point in time was Jonathan Gresham and somebody called A Kid, who's a Spanish wrestler apparently. Nice reverse DDT there by Pentagon as Adam Cole now taking Moxley up into that brain buster onto the knee. There's a pin one, two, and here two count. What surprised me if like uh, AW use like PWG almost like a developmental at this point in time, to be honest with you. Nice super kick to the knee and Adam Cole, there's the shining wizard. That's what's got him through to this final. Will it get him an elimination here as well? No, Moxley kicks out. Cole bringing Mox back up to his feet. Up once again. Looking for that brain bust onto the knee once again. And Moxley breaks free into a clothesline. Pentagon went for the drop kick and Moxley just avoided it. Adam Cole though rolling Moxley up out of nowhere. And again it's just a two count. Moxley sending Cole off the ropes. Both guys going shoulder to shoulder. Cole with a jawbreaker is now... Alistair Black flattening Pentagon. Tripping him over as well as Adam Cole now just catching Alistair Black with a right hand in the face. Black pushing Cole away and Pentagon just coming up from behind. It gets very messy when there's three guys fighting at once, doesn't it? And there's Pentagon locking in a sleeper hole but too close to the ropes. Referee forces the break instantly. Moxley, dirty deeds on Adam Cole. There's the pin. One, two, and Adam Cole kicks out as well. Pentagon now dropping Alistair Black head first on the outside as Moxley just flattens Adam Cole into the corner with a forearm and the bulldog out. Moxley slamming the arm of Adam Cole into the mat. Back up to his feet once again. Looking for a fisherman suplex. As Alistair Black and Pentagon continue to fight on the outside. Moxie now stalking Adam Cole. And it's the second Dirty Deeds of the match. Floats into a pin. One, two, and three. Adam Cole is eliminated by John Moxley. We're down to our final three. Alistair Black, Pentagon, and John Moxley. All three guys. Nope. I was going to see all three guys inside the ring, but that didn't last very long, did it really? Pentagon with the knee in the face of Moxley. Now bringing Mox back up to his feet. Mox fighting back. The boot in the gut. Now into that running bulldog plant in Pentagon face first into the mat. Brings him back up to a seated base before just pinching the skull. Twist in the neck. Just sheer brutality by Moxley. As Pentagon now just pushed him away. Brings Moxley back up to his feet and there's a boot right in the spine there by Alistair Black on Pentagon. And Alistair Black straight into the ace crusher. On Moxley, one, two. Oh, only a two count. Moxley kicked out in the brink of three. Black boot in the gut. DDT on Moxley. Moxley pings straight back up to his feet. He no-sold it. Cornette will not be happy. Pentagon dumping Moxley to the outside. All three guys now on the outside. Pentagon saying Moxley back into the ring, dropping a boot on the side of the face. All three men now back in the ring. Pentagon just wrenching the arm of Alistair Black. Now middle of the ring, hooking the arms. Pentagon package pile drive on Alistair Black. That could be enough. Drops into the pin. One. Two. No, only a two count. Alistair Black showing great resilience. 
Now Pentagon. Oh, code break and knees first into the face of Moxley. Pentagon in full control of this one. He says until I start talking. Pentagon with a super kick right in the face of Moxley. Who slides to the outside as Pentagon now dumping Black to the outside as well. And Pentagon going to the outside. Okay. They're loving this environmental fighting, aren't they? No count out, so might as well use the arena. Wow, well, what the hell just happened to Moxley? He just sort of sort of jumped through time and space there for a split second. Pentagon now bring in Alistair Black back up to his feet, looking for a hurricane, but Black reverses it, dropping Pentagon. And Pentagon was lucky there. I mean, if he was a couple of inches further back, Pentagon was going to plant his face right on those ring steps. And now he does plant his face right on those ring, ring steps. Black sending Moxley back into the ring. Black follows in. Moxley's wearing a very thick crimson mask now. Black on the back of Moxley into a German suplex. And now just wrenching back at the arm and the chin of Moxley. The Pentagon's having none of that. Pentagon sees an opportunity while Moxley's struggling to try and work over Alistair Black. There's a Russian leg sweep. And now Pentagon wrenching back at the neck of Alistair Black and Pentagon just trying to play the numbers game here. But Moxley's back up at his feet, but Moxley's struggling. I think he's taken a lot of damage so far in this one. There's a German and Pentagon bridges through for the pin. Oh, Moxley kicks out just in time. Pentagon taking Black up. Oh, into a Project Champer there by Pentagon, who now sends Moxley into the corner. Pentagon's been dominant here tonight. Moxley, though, turning the tables, looking for a right hand, and Pentagon turned the tables back. A boot straight across the shin, another one off the other shin. Another one off the other shin. And another one off the other shin. Shin blisters galore over here by Pentagon. Pentagon now taking... Oh, Moxley up into a Project Champions. Oh, Pentagon is just having a great night tonight, isn't he? He's just enjoying himself, just causing immense pain to anyone who will come anywhere near him. Alistair Black now front chancery on Pentagon. Pentagon catching that leg and catching the dragon screw. Clever manoeuvre. If you can take out that leg, you can take out the potential black mass. Very smart move by Pentagon. As Moxie now with a fisherman suplex on Pentagon. Moxley and Black trading strikes. I don't think that's going to be a good game for Moxley to be involved in, to be honest with you. Suplex by Moxley on Black. Moxley now catches Pentagon. There's the dirty deeds. That double arm DDT drops into the pin. One, two... And three, and Pentagon's been eliminated by Moxley. Wow, out of nowhere. We're down to our final two, John Moxley and Alistair Black. I thought Pentagon was going to win this. He looks so dominant. But it's down to Moxley and Black, and Moxley's in control at this point in time. On the outside with a snap suplex. Black's back smacking. Black's back smack right against the ground. Moxley sending him back into the ring. And looking for that leg breaker once again. You work on the legs of Alistair Black. You remove that black mass as a potential obstacle. Ambrose bring in... Oh, Ambrose, sorry. That's a dirty word. Moxley bring in Alistair Black back up to his feet. Now just wrenching back of the neck but too close to the ropes. Moxley with a boot in the back of the head of Black now locking it in a reverse dragon sleeper. But of course the strikes from Alistair Black. Oh! Out of nowhere, Alistair Black just swings round with a black mass. And Alistair Black wins the championship out of nowhere. He'd been brutalized for the last 15 minutes. And out of nowhere just spun and caught Moxley. With the black mass and Alistair Black is the first ever Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Wow. 
It was just, it was amazing just out of nowhere. That was so cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Wow. Okay. Great match. Really enjoyed that match, actually. I mean, I was moaning that some of the quality of the qualifying matches weren't quite there. They were all quite simple wins. But this match was a lot more entertaining. Really took it up a level. And Alistair Black wins the Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Nice. Well done. And not only that, I've already mentioned before, but I'll mention it once again next weekend. As well as our Impact Wrestling pay-per-view, we're also going to have another PWG show. And that is Pro Wrestling Gorilla's Black Mass, where we will have Kenny Omega defending the Pro Wrestling Gorilla Championship against, you guessed it, Alistair Black. So that's going to be pretty interesting as well. Alistair Black walks into that as the Combat Zone Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Anyway, that is the end of our three-part Best of the Best tournament. I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe if you would like to see some more. We'll be back with some more Combat Zone Wrestling in a couple of weeks' time when we're going to do a two-part tournament of death. But up until then, you've got a lot more wrestling action to watch. Of course, we've got Impact on Mondays, AEW on Tuesdays, Ring of Honor Wednesdays, New Japan Thursdays, Lucha Underground Fridays, and then across the weekend, we've got just pay-per-views galore. We've got Combat Zone Wrestling, Pro Wrestling, Guerrilla, Retro, Shimmer, Progress, everything you could possibly want. Just check out the main channel, and right at the top, in the center, you'll see all the playlists for all the different companies. Anyway, I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon for some more WWE 2K19. Goodbye.